I mean, Igimla. I've been saying it. Go and look for my video. Have I not been saying it that Igimla is uh, witchcraft? I've said it. That Ingingla, Unkafo, uh, Suleiman, all those people. You see, there are different kinds of categories that are pastors in Nigeria. There are those who have just have wrong doctrines because they have been blinded by the God of Mammon. Pastor Yedepo, Adeboye, all those people. It's not God of Mammon that is their problem. But, but when it comes to these other people like Ingingla, Suleiman, Okafo, that just witchcraft. Chris Oyakilome, that is ES, ESP. That is, yeah, uh, uh, what was the other guy? Joshua, he is the chief of witchcraft. He is the father of, the, of this witchcraft. I'm saying it on national, I'm saying it in the World Wide Web. You see, they are hearing me right now. Let them challenge my claim. And I will, approve, I will present my own proofs. Of course, when it comes to Suleiman, it's more, it's more, it's less of witchcraft. It's more of RNG, of course, it's RNG. But uh, but the people like uh, Ngingla, that is pure witchcraft. You know, there are three categories of them. There is witchcraft. There is RNG. There is ESP. Yeah. <laughs> they are all witch doctors, guys. But there are innocent ones that just missed it in the theory, I mean, in doctrines that, you know, like, or like Kumuyi, for example, that's just doctrinal issue. You know, but they are good people. You know, like, Adeboye, personally, I think he's a great man. He's a, I think he's a you know, sincere man to some extent, but, but God of Mammon messed up his theology. You know, it's God of Mammon that's just, blind, just blindfolded by by. You know, people like Ade Oyedepo and people like that. But, you know, they, were, they had an experience with God at a point. But they missed it because of money and, and uh, things like that. But this in Gimla guy and people like him, all these new generation people, forget it. Wishcraft. So that's what, I, what Satan used to mesmerize our people. And everybody is still looking for power like that, like in the days of witchcraft. But instead of witchcraft, we can turn that power, we can manifest it through technology. Greetings, people. It's Mr. Paul the Trigger yet again on another episode of the Enlightenment series. I hope you're all doing good. I hope I find you all well. Today, I did not quite manage to do any broadcast because I was busy. It was hectic. You know, some of us, we are in between things. Sometimes we are focusing on charlatans and at times we have to compensate for the time we spend here online, educating new people, enlightening new people. Because at the end of the day, we have to cash out. Not from charlatans, as many people are saying that I'm cashing out from charlatans. <laughs> Guys, I'm not cashing out from anyone. There is no one that has assigned me to do this. I'm not representing anyone here. I'm not advocating for anyone. But there are so many conspiracy theories that are being peddled by some of these frustrated Nigerian bloggers that I'm, I'm contained, I'm under Suleiman. Is it Suleiman, jo Johnson Suleiman? They're saying he's the one that contracted me, subcontracted me to expose uh, Jeremiah Omoto. Come on, the effort and the investment that I've made into this Enlightenment series. Do I sound, do I appear to be as if I'm trying to appease someone or I'm doing this to appease or to please someone? How much could have been paid? How much could I have been paid to do this? to go so hard on uh, our brother, Mr. Omoto, for fame. How much could I have been paid? How much do you think I'm worth? Let's start there. To a point whereby another man can approach me with a briefcase or with any amount of money and tell me to go and expose another man. That's being a sissy, man. That's being a woman. I'm a man. You know, when you go to restrooms, you see when they indicate that men we are the men that they are talking about. We are those men. We don't settle for these uh, kind of deals or contracts where a man can use me to expose another man. That's being feminine. Not me, people. I'm not working for anyone. With him, if you see a man with testosterone actually taking money from another man with testosterone to go and expose another man with testosterone, then you must know that man is not man enough to be called a man. He's just a young boy in a men's suit. 
So there's no one contracting me. I'm doing this from the purest part of my heart. There's no charlatan that has given me any money to actually expose other charlatans. I don't have anything against Mr. Fufain, but we are just correcting his errors. The same way that we have been correcting the errors of all the other charlatans that are in the body of Christ. There is no personal vendetta here. If you see this as, as an attack to a specific persona, or if you see this as defamation of character to any of one of these candidates, people, some of us who are here in South Africa, this is a, a, a nation that respects constitution. Anyone can sue me from any country, or at least I'm here in South Africa. If Omoto feels I'm defaming him, he must just take the legal route, the legal route, and come here to South Africa and sue me. And we can meet in court. But they know they can't do that because everything that I'm saying is spot on. If a boy or a depot feels like I'm defaming their characters when I expose their cults, they can come here and sue me and pursue justice because defamation of character is a crime. You know, and I can be sent to prison for defaming people's characters. But I'm not defaming any one of their characters because one, they don't have any character to defame to start off with. They don't have any image to protect. The image that you see, that's not their true identities. That you see online, that's not their true identities. They are imposters. They are lying. If they have not yet been prosecuted for the crimes that they have committed in the church of God, in the body of Christ, then what, what makes you think that I'll be that easy to prosecute? They don't have a standing, a legal right to come after me. They don't. The best that they can do is to come after me physically. To threaten me and, you know, use other channels to try to get me down to silence me. But legally, I'm waiting for all of them. I boldly say that anytime they are ready to dance to the party, they can come through. And we can see <laughs> how it goes. They will never do anything legal. They are, that's why they will bribe. But in South Africa, it's not that easy to come and bribe, you know, your top. When, when it gets to court, you can't bribe yourself out of this one. So the door is open. If I'm defaming any of these charlatans, these parasites, these cancerous entities in our society, they should come after me legally. Not to use corners to threaten me or to say this and this and that. We are correcting the errors. These are criminals. High-notch, top-notch criminals, all of them. And we can back it up. We can back it up any minute, any hour. We can have a proper argument, a legal argument. Argument, I mean. To actually make sure that these people get, go behind bars. But that's where they deserve. That's why we have to take each and every one of them to the ICC. So that they can all be brought to justice and questioned. For the crimes that they have committed. But they have committed so many crimes. They have extorted believers. They have robbed, manipulated, raped. And lied to, misled the society. Church, the church of God. And some, some of our constitution has an error as well, which needs to be corrected. And that error is in favor of religious organization, which entails that these people are, are free to the extent of expressing their beliefs. They are free to the extent of not being monitored. Who believes what, who does what, how they practice, whatever that they practice. That is the error in our constitutions. That needs to be corrected. That's why we need fresh minds. Because when they actually approved religion, religion and churches were seen as institutions that were going to shape the moral fiber of societies. Churches were meant to actually be institutions where broken people go to and they can be mended. They were meant to reduce the negative effects of uh, you know, societal you know, anarchies. When, when, when the society goes amiss and when there's high crime, Right in, in, in any society, the churches were supposed to play that role to bring people to, you know, to, to minister to them that crime is not good. Drug abuse is not good. Seek the face of the Lord. It was supposed to mold the citizens, the nation. It was supposed to bring that sanity in countries. When there are conflicts, that's what this responsibility of the church but they've turned into be the most dangerous institutions that one can ever dream or wish to be. Because that's where all the prostitution is happening in churches. Your pastors are sleeping with everyone in their congregation. These are now brothels. 
legalized brothels which are not being monitored and controlled. And when cases of this misconduct are, are reported, the ones that are in power to control this and to put order to all this madness, they remain silent. In each and every country, there are councils that are supposed to be monitoring these churches, but these councils, they are also made up of the same charlatans. That's why they will never put these churches into order. So they are useless councils in each and every country, which are, which are meant to regulate these churches. There is so much corruption happening. Money laundering is happening in these churches. They, they are not monitored. They are not controlled. A lot is happening. Which now makes us question and actually try to make sure that we correct the errors. And when we are in the process of correcting these errors, there is resistance. Those that have been blindfolded, they'll think we are attacking them. No, we are not. We don't have a reason to attack them. We don't hate them. We hate the way, their ways of conduct, how they are doing things. So I want you to listen to this brother. This brother was just, you know, was, what he's saying is, he's saying a lot. He's saying a lot of things that make sense. That these people that you follow, they are witches. They are witch doctors. They have nothing of Christ. They have nothing of God. And, you know, within the same context, there are some people that I always mention here as charlatans. And the charlatans, charlatan, it's a broad term to describe all of them that are misleading people, that are misrepresenting Christ. But we have different categories of these charlatans, which this brother is going to explain, but I have a different entry point to, all, to this whole you know, thing of charlatans. But what he's saying makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. He was mentioning the likes of Iginla, that Iginlas are, 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 they are witch doctors. They are Babalaos, the Iginlas. Their source of power, it comes from traditional healers. That's your Iginla. Anyone that goes to Iginla's church, they have a mental error somewhere, somehow. We have your Omotos. These ones, they are, you, you saw the, you know, the conversation he had with God. They have nothing of God. And we have your Ayodepos, Oyodepos, Adebayos, I mean, and Oyodepos. These are men that started well, but along the way, because of the love of money, they lost it. You know, they lost it. They started worshipping the god of Mammon. Everything that they do now, it's centered around money. It's no longer about the word of God. They are not as bad as these other clowns and charlatans. Well, these ones are barely into these sexual conducts. All they want to do is to control people and manage people and make sure that they take every penny from the people that subscribe to them. And then we have your aromas, Osai aromas. Then we have your Enenches. And then we have your Joshua Selman, your Chris Oyakilomes, your Makandiwas. These are doctrinal fraudsters. They are not as bad as the other ones, but these are the doctrinal charlatans. They are very smart and very intelligent, but their doctrine is very dangerous. It's inconsistent with the gospel of Christ. These are very well-educated men who sound very smooth, but the truth is very far away from them, very far away from them. And they have, man they have managed in their small niche to fool people by using their intelligence and their eloquence in speech to make people believe that they are the best, they are the ones to follow. But in them, there's no truth. They don't preach the gospel because they know the gospel liberates souls. So the moment souls are liberated, they will not make money in the process. So they've separated themselves from the entire pack so that they remain those ones that are teachers of the word. But yet the word that they teach is garbage. They don't preach anything that has to do with Christ. They don't preach the kingdom gospel. They are well-educated charlatans. And because they are representing their ideas and their philosophies to minds, Minds which have not yet absorbed the truth, minds without the truth, it becomes easier for them to lie and fool these crowds into believing that these ones are the ones with the truth gospel, yet they are not. They don't have any gospel. They don't have any doctrine of Christ. They don't. They are found lacking and seriously deficient of the true gospel. Okay, so just listen to the analysis which was made by this brother as he was labeling them and uh, categorically making a distinction amongst them as to which one belongs to which, which one belongs to what. 
but he's saying a lot of sense though. Even though I've heard in recent times that he also lost it along the way. He's called Dr. Sandy Adelaja or something like that. Yeah, I heard that he lost it along the way. This is common, man. You know, this is this is natural, especially if you are from Nigeria and you choose to take this path of standing for the truth and fighting charlatans. At one point, you will lose it. There are so many people that have lost it as we speak right now, from bloggers and to those that claim to be exposing charlatans. They always end up, you know, being bankrolled, <laughs> or they always end up losing it, going sideways and left, right, and center. It's normal. That's the other, you know thing we need to pull out from the Nigerian spirit, that thing of compromising. It does not mean all Nigerians compromise, but we have those few that take this stand. They always have ulterior motives. But Nigerians are good people, smart people, intelligent, well-educated people, reasonable people. But we have this small, you know, these little moles in this system that we need to get rid of. That's why Mr. Pull the Trigger is here. You might not be from Nigeria, but soon you will become Nigerian by public demand, that is. <laughs> I think my blood is half Nigerian. I'm, I, I, you know, okay, listen. Listen to the brother before I waste much of the time. Listen to what he said, and I hope you can people. relate. So I'm now realizing that I played the video first before I recorded the video that I just posted, that I attached or added to the initial video that you're supposed to be watching right now. So... Be that as it may, I hope no any inconvenience was caused. So all you have to do now is to like and leave a comment and subscribe. If it's your first time here, I'm Mr. Pull the Trigger, a.k.a. Prof. X. I'm here to pull triggers on false prophets, and it's our responsibility as a whole to make sure that we come together. And then we fight this cancer called false prophets because it is a cancer. It really is a cancer that we must fight together. So everybody has to take part. Everybody has to do something. If you can't do anything other than liking, commenting, and sharing this message, then why are you here? Do something. Participate. Don't just be a, a spectator because being a spectator will not bring us to justice, will not help us you know, in deconstructing, in demystifying, in, in annihilating this occultic and evil movement of the prophetic. But well, this movement is not biblical first, and it has brought damage and crisis to the body of Christ, deception, manipulations, extortion, blackmailing. It has all been happening. It's all have been covered in this cold soul movement of the prophetic. There are no prophets in Africa. There are no prophets that we know of as yet. We don't need prophets. We need servants of God that can preach the gospel, servants of God that can uplift and help the community in all aspects of goodness. We don't want these babalao prosperity preachers because everything that they are saying is not practical. There's nothing that they talk about will ever manifest. They are just liars, a bunch of liars and criminals. So we need to help and change the lives of our African people. And that's where you come in. You share this message. You leave a like. You leave a comment. Let's make sure that we take this movement forward. And it takes you and me to play a role in this whole thing. So till I think... Till I, okay, till I meet you again on the next episode of the Enlightenment Series, it's Mr. Paul the Trigger. I'm out.